Ah. Oh, we're back. Um, talking with Woody. Um, gee, the, the various clarinet moods that you have are amazing. It's really wonderful. Yes, I went uh, from amusing to hilarious. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but when, when, you're, um, when you're directing a film like you've been doing lately, is it, is it bad while you're directing a film to go see other people's movies? <clears throat> bad for me. I don't see many movies as yeah. a rule because uh, I don't see contemporary comedies as a rule. I see um, pictures that can't influence me very much. I saw the last picture I saw actually uh, was the Hellstrom Chronicle, which is a good oh, yeah. picture. I don't know if you saw it or not. The insect picture. picture. Yeah, yeah. and uh, they, sh <laughs> they showed two spiders <laughs> making love in the picture. And um, they, the narrator said that uh, amongst insects, um, the, you know, the only important thing is that the female, doesn't matter what she's like, as long as she's of the same species. Uh -huh. And that interested me because those are my standards. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so it was yes. really fascinating. You identified with the bugs. Immediately, uh, so yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you can't escape identifying if you go to the movies, I think, no matter what it is. I thought I would be safe in that picture. Mm -hmm. I avoid all comedies that can, that can uh, influence me. And, um, and as, as a consequence, my pictures are unlike anyone else's pictures. And I don't know if that's, uh, some of it's good and some of it's not so good, because uh, yeah. uh, I wish, uh, I'm glad they're unusual pictures. Uh, I wish I could get my feet more rooted in reality to some degree, because uh, I think I could probably make even better films, even better. Um, I think I could make <laughs> passable films if, um, <laughs> you know, if I did that. Don't have to be modest. It is, that is interesting that it, when you're working on something you don't, I've heard that said in other media, writers that don't, who write, who are writing a novel, don't dare read other novels, uh, songwriters right. won't, can't listen to other music, and yet there are those who, who do, who, th who are afraid that they're going to not be hip to something that's going on. And, um, I think if, if, your, if your work comes from inside your own head a lot, you know what I mean, like someone, I'm thinking of Fellini, whose yeah. images on the screen and whose projects are enormously um, uh, personal that you don't have to see anybody else or do anything else or you know you could you could, he could just sit in his room and never go out and make those same pictures because uh, all those bizarre things and the same thing with me I could sit in my room and never go out and probably make take the money and run or bananas um, because they're you know there's not that much they're not the humor is not rooted in it's surrealistic mm -hmm. you, but would you like to make a comedy that was completely non surrealistic then something like uh where everything in it could actually happen, and uh, like it happened one night, or some of the old classic comic films like that. Where, uh, gee, you know, I don't know. I might want to do that for fun. what you meant when you said fun. more based in reality? Yeah, I, as it turns out, my, the projects that I'm working on now, I'm, I'm going to appear in uh, the film version of my play, Play It Again, Sam. Uh, Paramount's mm -hmm. making it into a movie, and I'm not directing it or anything, but I will be appearing in it. Uh, you know, it will require about eight weeks of acting. Um, uh, and but that that I would not consider my movie. That's just an mm -hmm. acting job. But um, following that in December, I'm going to go into production with a film that I wrote, and we'll be starring in and directing, starring in with other people, and directing uh, based on um, Dr. Rubin's book, Everything You Always Wanted to Know About Sex But Were Afraid to Ask. And um, I've written a script that can only be described as Rabelaisian. And um, what would be another word for it? Uh, trashy. Uh, and it's, um, it's an exploration of the ins and outs, every little nook and cranny of our sexual um, motivations and interests and uh, graphically illustrated. It would be um, sexual relations if the Marx Brothers were doing them. Oh, that should be hilarious. Yeah, it's very do you, personal. Do you get a pressure ever to, because you can write, uh, not to waste your time on anything else. I mean, writing is generally taken to be the most serious talent a person can have. And if a person can write as you can, um, seriously if you want to, or funny if you want to, do you ever get this pressure of why, should you, why do you fool around with movies or music or any of that from other people? Or even from yourself? You yeah, you, 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 you should you just write. Well, you do it because uh, you get away from writing. It's real tough to write. Because yeah. when, when I wake up in the morning and I have to write something, I have to lock myself in the room, in my office or my bedroom or wherever it is I like to write. I can lie in the bed and write. Uh -huh. Now you know. Um, and with a pencil. Yeah. And um, you do it alone. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and uh, the maid will slip a sandwich in at about 12.30 in the afternoon. You know what I mean? And that's the sum total of my social activity when I write. 
and, is, but when I do a movie, I get a chance to, or a play, I get a chance to meet people and I can cast and attractive women come in and audition and I, and I meet camera people and look through mm -hmm. cameras and travel and, you know, it's real depressing. What can you make the most perfect? This is sort of a dumb question, but I mean... It, a blonde. No, 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 I don't mean in that, I meant in that area. I mean, I always have a thing when I see something that I think is perfect, like a, a Bergman film or a, a short story by Gene Stafford, or, mm -hmm. you know, it can be in any field. Something that's just, they, the, the person just got it perfect, and it's a frustration that I have, because I don't get, there's no way in this mixed up kind of job that mm -hmm. I do to ever feel like you've actually had the time to work out anything just the way you want it, every frame of a film being perfect, every word of a short story or whatever. Right. Do you get that more in writing than you do in making you get a film? It, well, I, I go for it more in writing. And uh, See, I like my movies to be sloppy. If you've seen Take the Money and Run and Bananas, yes. I like them to look real sloppy, you know, where nothing matches and jokes come in from left field and, and um, you know, where it, it should look like a rough chair instead of a nice Louis the Fourteenth chair. You know, I mean, I want it to look real sloppy is what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas when you write something, if I write something for the New Yorker or for a magazine, um, you want it to be perfect. And it's easier to make it perfect because it's so small. You know, you can yeah. just cuddle it yeah. and fondle it until it becomes sweet. Do you ever get into this kind of argument of whether the movies are an art or not? Do you think that a, a masterpiece by Bergman can be compared to a masterpiece by Picasso and then that kind of uh, boring yeah. argument? Yeah, I do get into those boring arguments. And, yeah. and uh, yes, I do think it, though. I do think that films are an art and that there are a few films that are really artistic and, and rank with the greatest masterpieces in any other art form. What would be three of those? You really want to know? Yeah. Uh, the Seventh Seal. Yeah. by Ingmar Bergman, I would say is a, a great picture, a great artistic picture. Um, I think La Ventura mm -hmm. by uh, Antonioni is a great picture. And um, there's one Andy Hardy film that... Um, <laughs> mm. uh, I asked Orson Welles that question. Oh, Grand Illusion was, was great one. Film. Grand Illusion was a great film. Yeah. yeah. When I asked Wells that, he named two movies, one of which was Grand Illusion, and he named another one, and then we were rushed. He knew that the camera that was going to go commercial, and he said, and something else. Yeah, something else? And film buffs went out looking for this movie, Something Else, for weeks. Uh, they thought, he, the way he said it, it came out as a title. Right. Something Else, a film by Francois Truffaut. Right, yes, with uh, Claudia um, Obginale. Yes. There's a... There's a uh, bit of film that we have of one of your films now, and it's from, the other, from your first movie, Take the Money and Run. Right. After mentioning these great films, you know, I hate to show this. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, it, it's wry in its intent, and um, ah. it's, a, it's an interesting little f piece of film from Take the Money and Run. Okay. And that's all. Let's take it and show it. Uh, oh, what? One second? It's coming up now. Unable to fit in with any aspect of his environment, Virgil strikes out on his own. Just as a footnote to film history, where was that alley, anyway? That was behind the Hungry Eye in San Francisco. I thought so. I know that alley. Do you? Yes, I used to go there after my act, uh, when I was appearing at the Hungry Eye. I would go there and meet the audience, and we would both be sick occasionally. It was really, I, right. I, I knew, recognized That's that. That's where it is. We, we shot Take weird. the Money and Run in San Francisco. This was some years ago now. Yeah. And we had, to make, we had to find a city that would look like seven different places in the United States, none of which were San Francisco, because the movie takes place in New Jersey, Indiana, mm -hmm. down south, uh, New York. And San Francisco, if you shoot it judiciously, 
and hit the right parts of town. You can make it look like almost any place in the United States. That's good to know if you're making a film. After this message, we will be right back. <laughs>